Welcome to the channel, I'm Amedeo602, and today we're going to talk about how to get past the first major boss in Elden Ring, Marjit the Fell Omen. This is a complete guide covering Marjit. I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about this boss, except maybe how to pronounce his name. If I'm saying that name wrong, please let me know in the comments down below. With that aside, because this is a boss battle guide, please do expect some spoilers. First we're going to talk about how to completely skip the Marjit battle. But assuming that you really do want to fight this boss, we're going to cover the Marjit's Shackle item, which makes this battle a lot easier. We're going to go into a few tips and tricks to prepare for the fight. I'm going to cover most of Marjit's main attacks and how you can counter them. Then I'm going to provide some commentary during my full fight with Marjit. Finally, we're going to wrap up with the rewards that you get when you defeat Marjit. First, let's cover how to bypass this boss. Starting from the Stormhill Shack Grace Point, open your map and put a marker right here, north-northwest at the beginning of this bridge. Make your way to the area that you just marked on the beacon. You can take your horse or travel on foot, whichever you prefer. When you get to the beginning of the bridge, there's an NPC that you can interact with. And then when you get to the end of the bridge, drop down and continue through this narrow passageway. Toward the end of this narrow walkway, you'll come across some wolves, you can choose to kill them. The first time I ran through here, I just used a bow and arrow to kill them. If you choose to fight them, just be careful because there isn't a whole lot of room for error. You can also just ride your horse past them because they cannot keep up with the horse. After the second pack of wolves, you're going to come across a grace point and a new area. Doing this lets you completely bypass Margit in the beginning of the game. As of the time of this recording, I had not yet finished Elden Ring, so I have no idea if you do have to go back and kill him. So just keep that in mind. Next, I'm going to talk about Margit's Shackle, how to get it, what it does, and why you want it. You can purchase Margit's Shackle from the vendor for 5,000 runes, and the Shackle lets you stun Margit twice during the first phase of the battle. It's also worth knowing that if you get summoned into someone else's world, you can also use your Shackle to stun the boss in their world. The vendor patches can be found in Murkwater Cave, directly east of the first ruins you encounter, I don't want to spoil the surprise of what Patches does, but let's just say the first time you fight him, you do not want to kill him. Spare his life, and then the next time you go back to see him, he will be a friendly vendor. Simply farm 5,000 runes in order to purchase this item from him. If you need the runes, I recommend farming for them in the ruins that we talked about earlier. And the guards here also drop a variety of weapons and armor. I am using the Lord Sworn Greatsword in this fight. And this weapon also drops from these enemies. Now it's time to talk about a few things you can do before the fight to prepare yourself. As I just mentioned, I was using the Lord Sworn's Greatsword, which is dropped in the ruins right before you get to this boss. But you can use any item that you have upgraded. I do recommend having an item upgraded to at least plus two or plus three for this fight, although my item was completely unupgraded. I also completed this fight without having any armor equipped, just to show that it's possible to kill this boss with just the most basic equipment. I was soul level 23 when I killed him, so if you're in that mid 20s soul level with decent equipment, you should be able to take him down pretty easily using the tips that I'm about to give you. On the right side of the fog gate leading into the boss battle, there should be an NPC summon for Sorcerer Roger. Go ahead and summon him, we're going to use him to tank for us during this fight. There are three items that you should have available on your quick bar or in your quick access pouches. Those are, of course, the Estus Flask, Market's Shackle, and the Wolf Summon. You can also use the Jellyfish Summon if you really prefer that one, but the Wolves will do more damage for you. Make sure to wait for the NPC Summon to appear before entering the Fog Gate, otherwise he will take a very long time to get into the fight. Next, I'm going to cover most of Marjit's major attacks and how you should be reacting to them. When the battle begins, Margit likes to start off with either a Jumping Staff Slam, a Magic Dagger Throw, or a Dash and Twirl attack. He uses all three of these attacks throughout the battle, so it's good to learn about each one so you know how to counter it. First, I'm going to cover the Jumping Staff Slam. Margit runs towards you, jumps high into the air, and slams the ground with his staff. When he's in the air, just before he hits, you want to roll toward his back, hold in the R2 button, and perform a charged R2 attack. Next, we're going to cover the Magic Dagger Throw. This one's pretty basic. Margo summons a magic dagger in his left hand and throws it at you. He might throw one dagger, he might throw two, he might throw three or four daggers. 
He usually only does this when you're far away, so your best bet is to just dodge left or right horizontally in order to avoid the daggers. When Marjit runs towards you with his staff raised in the air, he's about to perform the dash and twirl attack. In this attack, Marjit dashes towards you and performs one attack. After that first attack, about 90% of the time, he'll also jump in the air doing a twirl attack. I recommend rolling toward the boss twice and then holding in R2 for a charged attack. Next, we're going to talk about the tail swipe attack. Marjit usually does this attack when you are up close punishing him after one of his other attacks, and he'll just quickly swipe his tail under your feet. You can jump over this attack or you can just roll to avoid it. Marjit also performs a horizontal swipe. To avoid this horizontal swipe, you can either dodge or jump. This attack is usually followed up by some other melee attack, so I wouldn't recommend attacking him when he does the horizontal swipe. Marjit has a few other combos that are pretty difficult to dodge, the first being an upward swipe. You can tell that he's about to perform the upward swipe when he twirls his sword, and you don't have very much reaction time on this, so I suggest rolling away or blocking as soon as possible. Marjit will occasionally summon a magic sword, slash with it twice, and then stab the ground with his staff. This attack's pretty difficult to dodge, and I recommend just trying to get away from him when he does this. Once you've gotten Marjit to about half health, he enters phase two and starts using a magic hammer. If any friendly characters are near Marjit when he pulls out the magic hammer, he'll usually take a swipe at them, and then he'll prepare to do a hammer slam, where he jumps high into the air and then slams the ground with his hammer. You want to counter this very similarly to the jumping staff slam, just be aware that the hammer slam is longer, so the timing is just a little bit different. Just like with the jumping staff slam, you can hit Margo with a charged R2 attack after he lands for quite a bit of damage. Marjit also has a few other melee attacks. For most of these attacks, it's best to just roll through and wait for him to perform one of his slam attacks mentioned earlier. Now that we've covered all of Marjit's attacks, let's get into a live commentary gameplay of my first successful fight against Marjit. You can see here I have the Marjit Shackle item that we talked about earlier. You can use this item two times during the first phase to stun the boss. We summon the NPC, and once he is spawned into the game, we go through the fog gate. Marjit starts off with a magic dagger throw. Dodge left and right to avoid that. Then I rolled under the jumping staff slam. That gave me a perfect window to use a charged R2 attack and use the Marjit Shackle item. While the boss was stunned, the NPC and I put several hits into him, and it was just enough to stagger him. When he's staggered, you can either do a backstab or do a critical attack from the front. Once he stands up from that, he focuses on the NPC a little bit. And he tries to hit me with a tail swipe, so I shackle him again. The second shackle immediately stun locks the boss, and I get another critical hit. This takes us into phase two of the boss battle. You can see he's going to pull out the magic hammer, swipe at the NPC, and then do a jumping attack. I was a little bit too far away to hit him with my charged R2, so we just reset the fight, let him refocus on the NPC, and start attacking when his back is turned. You can see there he hit me with an attack, so I immediately back up and begin to heal. You can see right there I tried to use the shackle, and you can see how that has no effect in phase two. Heal up and I call in the wolves. I like to use the wolves instead of the jellyfish because there are three NPCs that he focuses on, and that gives me more chances to back up and heal or to do attacks to his tail. Attack a few times, once your stamina is low, run back, let it recharge. And you can see I'm doing a lot of jumping R2 attacks here in order to damage his posture to get another critical hit in at the very end. Toward the end of the fight here, it's just kind of waiting for the NPCs to do damage to him, dodging his attacks, and I think the wolves actually kill him. So while this is a tough boss battle, it's definitely possible to do. I was soul level 23, I only used one two-handed Lord Sworn Greatsword and no armor. When you kill Margit, you are rewarded with a talisman pouch, which lets you use an additional talisman, and you also receive 9,000 runes. 
The amount of rooms that you get might be level dependent, I'm not really sure about that. I got 9,000 at soul level 23, and when I helped another player defeat this boss, I was awarded with 3,000 runes. Don't forget to leave a like for the video if this helped you out, and subscribe to the channel if you want to catch more content like this in the future. And as always, thank you very much for watching.